Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today is the uh, 10th of uh, April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this uh, Good Friday's uh, morning recorded session. Uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, also just before we jump in, as usual, uh, let's quickly, uh, I'll quick re a reminder of our JFD YouTube channel, um, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free guys to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there, guys, on the top. So, uh, I hope you can find some useful information here. Now, also, um, just before we jump in, uh, also a quick, um, quick refresh of, of the data of what's happening here. So um, probably most likely we have already overcame the one and a half million uh, infections uh, globally. So let's have a quick look. Oh, well, I mean, even <clears throat> we went even further. So, um, as usual, in the um, US, Spain, Italy continue to lead the way. Um, so, yep, and the total amount of deaths is kind of approaching, uh, all, all, almost approaching the 100,000 level. So, yep, guys, I hope you're all staying safe, um, stay, stay cautious, and uh, yep, uh, try to protect yourselves. So, now then, uh, let's jump into the charts. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the, is the German DAX. Now, the German, uh, the Euro European equity markets are closed today um, due to Good Friday. So happy Good Friday to all those who are uh, who is going to be who's going to be celebrating Easter uh, this weekend. So yep. Um, now looking at the picture here, just a quick update. So what happened yesterday? So basically the index managed to eventually overcome the um, the 15, uh, 10,590 zone, the one that I kept talking about uh, throughout this whole week, um, but. As you can see, um, as you can see, uh, it kind of failed to close above it. So basically, yes, on one hand, we did get a nice break above this. However, it, as you can see, the daily candle still closed uh, the the day uh, below below this barrier. So in a way, this kind of level becomes quite an important one to watch. I mean, quite a tricky one to watch as well. Um, so in a way, we'll continue monitoring this one. If we get another push above this, then maybe this the second round could be more successful for the buyers and they could uh, then uh, push the um, the uh, the German DAX uh, to the uh, to that psychological 11,000 uh, zone so again that's that's our main target for now so we'll see how that performs how that plays out um, in terms of the down the downside still the same idea remains so basically for next week keep your eyes on this uh, 10,000 mark uh, if we get a drop below this then yep we could maybe consider a bit of declines uh, the FTSE 100 as well uh, this one's a little bit more uh, attractive because it managed to close um, it managed to close above the uh, that barrier that I kept talking about, the 5,815 zone. Um, and to be honest, uh, it continued to kind of travel higher. And looking at the cash index, the cash index even closed a little bit even more to the upside. So basically, uh, the cash index is, is currently sitting at 5,856 zone. So um, again, that's where it closed. 
So, uh, yep, uh, it will be uh, quite interesting to see if this can continue pushing further north, um, further north next week. For now, yes, we are going to be leaning uh, towards that uh, scenario, uh, where the next target for us will be around this 6,231 zone. In terms of the downside, we would like to see it and move back down here, uh, and we will take a very conservative approach and wait for a drop below the 5,352 zone, and then we could consider some deeper um, extensions to the downside. So keep your eyes on that one. So um, now then, Nikkei. So uh, something that still is open um, and uh, is going to be closing soon uh, in about 20 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So, yep, uh, keep your eyes on this one. But, however, the main focus right now and still, as I've mentioned uh, previously in my videos, uh, in, yesterday, in, my, in my yesterday's video, um, this barrier here, the uh, 19,564, 65 zone, that's what we're looking here for. That's what we need to see a break off first before we could consider some higher levels for now. It's uh, still struggling, as we can see. Um, it did come close to this barrier, but uh, kind of failed to overcome it. So again, we still have to about 20 minutes left, but I, somehow it seems that there we might end up the week somewhere around here. So we, all eyes then are on the next next week. But the same idea remains here. We need to see a break of this barrier here, the 19,564, 65 zone, and then, yep, we could aim for higher levels. In terms of the downside, well, we would uh, maybe start considering lower levels if we get a drop below this level here, the 18,948, or even you could round it up towards the 50. So 18,950 18, zone that could be a nice area to watch because that's the lowest point of 2018, guys. Something to keep in mind, something to consider. Um, and if we see a drop below this, then yes, um, this could also place the uh, index below the uh, 21 EMA here on the daily chart. And then our next target could be around here, around the 17,646 or even also you could round up towards the 50 mark. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, Shanghai Composite. Now, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while. I mean, this one uh, today is on a decline. <clears throat> and on a steep decline, but um, as you can see, um, or actually no, it's it's already dropping below the 21-day EMA. So the big question here is, can this stay here? Um, for now, looking at this picture, I mean, um, yes, it is on a decline. However, uh, one thing that I really wanted to show you here, and it's good that I'm on a daily, a daily chart. Now, we are seeing a slide, yes, but overall, uh, we are still trading above this upside support line here, taken from the low, roughly from the low of the 19th of March. Um, however, this this move higher could still be seen as a potential rising veg pattern. So basically uh, something like this could be possible here. Um, and uh, let me just quickly adjust this. There we go. So roughly around this, like, the, like this, guys. Um, basically, if we do see a drop lower here and we do see a violation of the, uh, let's assume that this is a rising veg uh, pattern, then if we see a, lo a, a drop low, the lower, lower side of it, then yes, we will aim for lower levels for now uh, for now it is kind of tricky um, it is for now it's it's tr yes it is pushing lower however until it's kind of stuck in this pattern here uh, yes we could continue uh, aiming higher because don't get me wrong it might drift lower test this uh, this upside line and then rebound and push to the upside again so that's why um, I'm not saying that this is a, a rising veg yet uh, ideally we would prefer to see maybe uh, at least three touches on each side and then we could consider this as a as a rising veg for now is we're go, we're just going to focus on this upside line um and uh, yep we'll keep an eye on this one in terms of the upside if we get a push above the high of the of this week which is around the 2800 and uh, uh 2833 mark then yes we will aim for some slightly higher levels this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh well we, we could maybe aim for a bit of more upside maybe even to this uh to this upper side of the potential rising veg pattern but again for now it's just an idea uh something to keep in the back of your heads guys now, oil. Um, of course, we yesterday we had the OPEC meeting, um, and the agreement was reached to cut uh, only around 
10 uh, billion barrels per per day um, however it still doesn't solve the problem of oversupply and may, maybe that's the reason why uh, we saw this reaction here initially the good news the good news came that they've managed to agree on the on the fact of cutting and you see you saw the uh, the oil spiking higher um, but eventually when everything was started getting evaluated more they and everybody understood that uh, well the 10 10 billion uh, barrels per uh, 10 billion sorry million barrels not billion million bar barrels uh per day isn't not is not gonna do the trick really so um it's not gonna solve the, the current problem so um long story short basically this is what happened with oil and uh yeah, oil started uh drifting lower however and uh, this is what i talked about yesterday we need to see a clear move out of this little range here uh, between the 3130 and the 3490 uh, levels um you can see that the mm, uh, the, uh, the the commodity is still stuck here so basically we're neutral we're waiting for this one to make a mo good move move out of this little range and then we could consider maybe a further directional move for now we're just sitting sitting and waiting basically uh, Bitcoin cash now I talked about this one yesterday as well and basically what I was saying that uh, keep your eyes on this little level the 249.50 zone if that gets broken and then the uh, crypto starts breaking the upside line this could lead towards lower levels now uh, of course for now uh, yes it is drifting a little bit lower but given that the day is not finished this could drift lower below the upside line could still be seen as a temporary uh, or should I say a false breakout so that's why we should not rush into this yet however if the uh if the crypto starts drifting below the 225 mark now this is where it could become a little bit more exciting for the sellers so keep your eyes on this one uh for now like i said yes we are leaning more towards the downside however we're keeping in mind the fact that we could see maybe a uh this a false breakout here on the daily chart and uh, we could see this one reversing and pushing back to the upside however with the upside uh, as i mentioned previously for us to get a little bit more comfortable uh, with higher levels we need to see a push above the uh, 280.50 mark and then yep we could aim for higher uh, for higher levels um, AUD USD quick update on here what's happening here and uh, I talked about this one uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday uh, basically that um, the pair um, the pair is kind of near this barrier so what I was saying that if we get a nice break above this and maybe even a, a daily close above this barrier this 0 0.6214 then yep uh, we could consider higher levels again but and for now you can see that this is moving in the in that direction so that everything's working according to plan it, we managed to even overcome the 0 0.6312 uh, territory somewhere around here and and uh, now, the, well, the next target for us is, of course, around here near the 0 0.6434 uh, mark, marked by the low of the 28th of February, or in other words, the lowest point of February. And slightly above that, we do have, have this downside line taken from the high of the 1st of January. So, in other words, um, again, for now, we are aiming higher. However, the upside might get limited near this downside line, especially if the uh, rate struggles to uh, overcome it. And, uh, yep, then we, we could see the bears stepping in here again and driving this one lower. Um now then, jumping into USDCHF, um, I talked about this one yesterday and basically what I was saying that um, we need to see a break of this short-term upside support line and a drop below the 0 0.9653 zone here in order to aim for lower levels for now. Uh, for now, you can see that um, the um, the pair is is trying to kind of make its way lower. However, is struggling with this with this hurdle uh, near this 0 0.9653. Um, but to be honest, if this continues to drift lower, if it drops below yesterday's low as well, then yep, uh, we will aim for for further declines. Um, I'm not saying that the that our next target is around 0 0.9497, but I'm not saying that this could get reached uh, soon. It might take a few days, to be honest, until until if it until it could reach this level. Um, and of course, in the in the scenario, if it wants to drift lower further down. So, yep, guys, keep your eyes on this one. 
um, for now, yep, we are keeping close eye on the 0 0.9653. Um, and uh, if, if it drifts further down below and below the low of yesterday, then yes, we will aim for further declines. Um, not maybe straight away to this level here, then 0 0.9497, but um, uh, yeah, and it could drift somewhere towards uh, this, somewhere in, in between here. So yep, keep your eyes on this. Um, USD CAD. So um, finally, we managed to see a drop and a good close of a daily candle below this barrier, below this level that I talked about, the 1.3986. And as, as you can see now, the pair wants to drift further south. So for now, that's going to be our main target, main scenario. Um, don't get me wrong, we could see some fluctuation here back and forth. But uh, for now, looking at this picture, um, it seems that the pair wants to drift f further south. We could aim for the low of um, of March 27th, which is around the uh, 1.3922 zone. That could be our next target. But if that gets uh, broken, then yep further declines are possible guys so keep your eyes on this one um, in terms of the upside well pretty straightforward we need to see a break of this downside line and only then we could consider some higher levels for now um, it's leaning more to to the downside rather than the upside GBP USD so um, this one keeps flirting with this barrier and uh, struggling to overcome it now the big question here is um, can we see a weekly candle close above this level above the 1.2485 so basically all eyes today are on today's uh today's candle and of course the weekly candle and uh we'll see if we can finish the week here uh above this above this territory above the 1.2485 if we can there's a there is a good chance for this one to drift maybe higher next week However, uh, given the the uh, given the fact that the uh, UK's prime minister is still in in ICU, um, we will remain cautious here because again, uh, when when we got the news that the British prime minister kind of was uh, put into intensive uh, care unit, uh, the pound uh, drifted lower. However, of course, after a day after that, I mean, reports were coming out saying that. He, he's still fine and the British pound kind of continued to rise so uh, but it was rising cautiously so basically in one week's time it it, it has risen uh, the same amount as it did for example in in the whole of March uh, 27th or even 26 so uh, that's why I mean it's for now we're very careful and cautious here uh, we need to see a break above this 1.2485 zone ideally maybe a daily close as well above this and then we could get a little bit more more comfortable with higher levels for now we're just waiting here GBP NZD quick mentioning here um, after uh, I've, I've talked about this one this week and basically what I was saying that in a way if this barrier here holds the 2.0764 continues to hold and provide good resistance then we could see a nice reversal here back to the downside um, and uh, yep especially if it drifts below the 2.0510 zone then yep we could consider further declines for now this is exactly what we're going to be doing we will be uh, aiming for lower levels and uh, yep, uh, for now, guys, uh, keep your eyes on this upside line because still, as long as we remain above this upside line, uh, we could continue kind of overall staying bullish. Um, however, from the very, very short term perspective, uh, yes, for now, we are looking for a bit of more declines, for a bit more declines, and we will aim for this upside support line taken from the low the 30th of July. Uh, so yep, we'll keep an eye, keep, your, keep our eyes on this one. Um, um, in terms of the upside probably here now um, we will start considering higher levels if we get push above the 2.0764 level that I one that I mentioned the one that acted as a good area of resistance and that and then we will aim for this high here near the 2.10 level which also is fantastic area of resistance here but if that gets broken now this is where we could get a little bit more comfortable with further acceleration to the upside for now um, yep, we'll initially start considering the upside if we get a push back above the 2.0764. And then, yep, uh, we'll be very careful near this 2.10 mark. Um, and finally, 
euro usd so here um let me just jump into a four hour chart uh, this is what i talked about yesterday basically we had a nice close here above this uh, above this 1.09 uh, 1.0926 level and uh but it got a hold up near this 1.0952 also what i was mentioning guys uh basically this two near the 200 ema on the four hour chart um now this all this becomes a very problematic here because this is a very strong area of resistance as you can see yourself um so basically um yes it pushed higher still i would, I would say that overall uh or just not even overall but um not overall but from the very short term perspective we are leading a little bit more to the um to the upside however let's not forget about this um Although we are seeing a bit of a, uh, again, a bit of a, a break here, and we, we saw already a break here of this downside line, this tentative downside line taken from the highs here of um, 9th of March, roughly around there. Um, you can see that the pair is still struggling with this 200 EMA. So basically, keep your eyes on this one, guys. Yes, the fact that it's uh, it managed to overcome this 1.0926 level that I mentioned, that's good news. That's great. It also managed to overcome this downside line, but uh, it's still we still need some a good push here from the bulls. So for now, we will remain cautiously bullish. Um, but we'll get a little bit more excited if we get a push above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart. And you can see that our oscillators here as well, uh, for now they're pointing higher. They're trying to make their way back to the, um, uh, to the 70 territory here. The, for example, the RSI and the MACD is also pointing higher while sitting above the zero line and, and it's trigger line as well. So basically the, there is a good chance for this one to drift higher today. However, uh, like I said, we'll be very careful today we could uh, we we uh the market the european markets are closed so maybe um and actually the uh the u.s markets is also closed so you have something to bear in mind let me just quickly double check yes of course that's yeah uh, that's the case um and uh so basically uh we could see low vol volatility here uh we could uh, but um yeah be very careful here if we again if we do see a push above that 200 ema then yes this is this is perfect this could lead to its higher levels for now uh we're very careful here guys um okay so i hope you found it useful um so thank you very much guys for watching and listening and uh i hope you have a great for, for those who are celebrating easter i hope you have a fantastic easter uh, uh and um yeah, guys. Um, uh, if you if you're still trading today, if you're still in the markets, then uh, you can catch my video later on. Um, uh, my traders' tea time uh, around 13:15 GMT time, and uh, we'll I'll pick up as usual. I'll pick up on some some of these instruments, some new ones, and we'll take it from there, guys. But um, yeah, for now, if like I said, if you are going to be trading, be very careful, uh, be very cautious, and uh, I hope you have. Uh, a great trading day um, if like i said if you're still trading some something um and of course guys stay safe health wise thank you very much and i'll see you later bye, -bye.